He arrived on the PGA Tour scene in 1971, a brash kid from Richmond by way of Wake Forest University, a year removed from winning the U.S. Amateur. With a homegrown swing and a truckload of confidence, Jerry Lanston Watkins Jr., better known as Lanny, wasn't much for the finer points of the game. I don't really know much about theory, just basics, he once said as a rookie. I was taught to just womp it. That's what I do. He hit the ball as solid as anybody ever hit the ball, in the middle of the club face, every swing he made. You add to that his competitive nature, which <laughs> I have to say is, is about as tough as anybody out here. He was a real factor. Watkins stayed true to that approach throughout a PGA Tour career spanning a quarter century, one that produced 21 tour titles, including the 1977 PGA Championship and the 1979 Players' Championship. What a champion. Boy, he wins a big one. Along with the 1985 PGA Tour Player of the Year Award. A more fierce competitor is hard to come across. When he was on his game, uh, it was wonderful to watch because he took dead aim at just about everything. Oh, and he's coming right at it. Oh, what a shot! And again. One of the most fearless and tenacious competitors of his generation, Watkins was at his best in big moments, none more so than at the Ryder Cup, where his 20, 11, and 3 record in eight appearances is the second highest win total in United States team history. And he's done it. Pretty good. It just shows what kind of competitive guy he is, that when he needed a good shot, he could often pull it off and, and come out with the best. As a match player, it was incredibly tough to beat, and just one of those guys that love to get in your face and say, come on, take me on. A style that was often imitated, but never duplicated fashioning a career worthy of the World Golf Hall of Fame. You know, one of the thrills of my life was working next to Jim at CBS. And, uh, you know, golf puts you around a lot of quality and wonderful people. And I don't think I've ever been around a finer human being than Jim Nance. And uh, to call him my friend, uh, I'm very honored. And I'm honored that he came here and did this for me tonight. And I think the thing that excited me the most is when I asked him to do this, he's just been so excited ever since and um, I think that's reflecting tonight and it's okay he called me a little I'll, I'll get back at him There's somewhere on the line I'll get him but uh, you know he you last last but anyway it's, it's great uh, great for you to be here thank you Jim uh, I want to start by thanking very quickly I want to thank Jack Peter and Brody Waters and the staff at the World Golf Hall of Fame um, they have just made this an outstanding experience for my friends my family myself and, uh, you know, I've, I've had the pleasure of working with different organizations. And, um, I mean, Julius Mason and Susan Martin at the PGA of America when I was Ryder Cup captain were off the charts. And I got to tell you, they just joined right in. They're right in step with, with you guys, Julius. It's, uh, it's an amazing organization here at the World Golf Hall of Fame. And I just thank Jack and Brody and their staff for everything they've done to make this a wonderful, wonderful week for us. Thank you. <clears throat> I want to take a moment and congratulate the other inductees this evening, Christy O'Connor. I, I, was, I was blessed to be able to play enough tournaments in Europe that I got to see him play, and it was, uh, it was a treat. It was a, just a clinic. Every time I got to watch him on the practice tee, I felt like I was watching Sam Sneed in Ireland, and, and, and Sam was still over here. But it was, it was an absolute treat to watch Christy play, just a joy. And then Jose Maria. A man that I played a lot against, um, and we talked tonight. We played a lot alike, um, and I think that's one reason we respect each other so much and had so much fun competing against each, against each other. Was it was just you know we both played golf the right way. We played it hard, we played it tough, and we wanted to win. And there's nothing wrong with that. And uh, it was always an honor to compete against Jose Maria, and I want to congratulate him on being here this evening. And then. Thank you. Then General Eisenhower. President Eisenhower, it's, it, and it struck me as, as quite odd here a minute ago when the king was asking if he could call the president by his first name. Isn't that okay? <laughs> Should be, but uh, you know, General Eisenhower is a, is a true hero. I mean, he's not only a hero 
uh, for all of us golfers, but he is a hero to a generation of Americans, and a lot of us are sitting here you know, thanks to what he's done, and you know, we cannot ever thank him enough. And speaking of heroes, you know, to join this World Golf Hall of Fame, I'm having a chance to be a part of something that my heroes are in. And as a kid growing up in Richmond, Bobby and I would hunt golf balls in the golf course to have balls to play with. And, uh, and we could always find a ball that had Arnold's name on it or Sam Snead's name on it. And we're, you know, they were our heroes. And uh, the first time I got to play with Arnold, I was 17 years old. And uh, one of the very, my first hero that I got to play with was, was Arnold. And then later on in 1974, we got to play together in the Disney Team Championship right down the road in Orlando. And I got to play seven days in a row with Arnold Palmer as my partner. And he had asked me to play with him in, in that event. I mean, I want you to stop and think about it. What could you sell seven days in a row for Arnold Palmer with? I mean, that was an incredible experience for me. And I just, you know, it, it's an experience I'll never forget. Uh, is, is being there with Arnold that day. And we almost got him, Arnie. We, we played tough that week. We were there. But um, it, was, it was great fun. And I think that's the thing, is I got to be with so many heroes, got to play with my heroes. And um, <clears throat> I go back to my very first Masters, 1970. I stayed in the Crow's Nest with Tom Watson, Hall of Famer, great friend. And that was an experience in itself. I got to play my very first round at the Masters with Jackie Burke another hero. I got to play my second round in the Masters that year with Gene Sarazen, another hero, Hall of Famer. I've played in the Masters with Gene Sarazen. 1972, I played in the U.S. Open the first two days. Julius Boris, Jack Nicklaus, who went on to win that week. 1973, I played in the U.S. Open with Ben Crenshaw, then an amateur, and Sam Snead. People I've gotten to play with. I've gotten to play with my heroes. Where can you do that other than golf? I mean, golf, you know, we just saw today how, you know, the Champions Tour, the people are still playing and competing, and, and I got to play with my heroes growing up. And I don't think it's anything I'll ever, you know, cherish more in my life than being able to be with my heroes and being so special. You know, they're such good friends, good people, and you learn from them and get to share your life with them is something I will treasure my entire life. And to be part of a Hall of Fame with these men in it, uh, I'm just honored beyond belief. It's, it's something I I'd never expected. I never started off playing golf to be in a Hall of Fame. I started off playing golf because I loved it. I wanted to compete. I wanted to win. And I was always out there doing something that I really, really enjoyed. And to be in a World Golf Hall of Fame with my heroes is just something that will, uh, I'll, I'll cherish for the rest of my life. You don't get some place like this without a lot of help along the way. And I've got to thank, first and foremost, my parents, Jerry and Francis. They sacrificed so much for Bobby, Ann, and myself to have the life that we had, for us to be able to play golf, compete, and do all the things that we did. They worked very hard. There were weeks when I would not see my dad. He would go to work before I got up and come home to work after I'd gone to bed. And I mean, it, just to give us a chance to enjoy the finer things in life. And it was uh, an experience. Uh, that I've, I've taken with me to this day. And I know that a lot of people know that nobody has probably hit more golf balls than Bobby and I on the range. And I think we get our work, ethic, work ethic from our parents. Uh, they worked hard to give us a chance. And um, all we can do is say, thank you, mom. I'm you know, so proud you're here. I don't think there's ever been a P successful PGA Tour professional that didn't have a mentor, someone who took him over, and usually that was a PGA pro. Mine was Popeye Lumpkin at Meadowbrook Country Club, a, a wonderful PGA of America member who went out of his way to see that I had every advantage when it came to lessons and equipment that I could have as a, as a kid. He took Bobby and I under his wing and uh, just really helped develop us into what we were as golfers and as gentlemen, and I appreciate that so much. Um, I wish he was here today to enjoy this, but uh, he was someone very special in our lives and um, a man that I just, I, I don't think I would be here without. And then I, I kind of moved on from Meadowbrook as I, as I grew and, and went on to Wake Forest. And I got to say thank you to Jesse Haddock. Uh, Coach Haddock 
set me up at Wake Forest. I was there on the Buddy Worsham Memorial Scholarship, a scholarship started by Arnold in memory of his roommate who died in an automobile accident while they were in school together at Wake, and it was an honor to be on that scholarship. Ar Arnold started something at Wake Forest that a lot of us have continued to follow, you know, endowing scholarships and being involved in our university, and I think that um, it's one thing he's proud of, I'm proud of, that, you know, through Jesse and, and his mentorship that We've all stayed involved at Wake Forest, and we're very, very proud of, of you know, what that university represents and, and the quality of people that's turned out of that program. And that's a big thanks to Jesse Haddock. A couple of weeks ago, I was in Houston playing in a Champions Tour event, and I had a day off, and I was playing with a good friend of mine, Gordon Johnson, who's a pro at Houston Country Club. And as I've done more than I would like to lately, I got on a par three and I kind of fanned it over to the right of the green short with a four iron. I had a very tough pitch. And I went in there and played a nice little wedge, a little 58 degree, whipped it up, didn't think I could stop it short of the hole, and I did. And Gordon looked at that and said, that's a shot you just can't teach. And I said, yes, it is, because Dick Harmon taught me that shot. And Dick Harmon taught me a lot of shots. And Dick Harmon came into my life in 1985 as a friend and teacher, and um, I learned as much golf from him in a short period of time as I've ever learned in my life, and it was uh, a true joy to be um, a part of the Harmon family, because when you knew one of the Harmons, you knew them all, from Claude down to Butch, Billy and Craig, and it's just a wonderful family, and I uh, really want to remember Dick here today. We miss him. He was a, a wonderful teacher and mentor. And I want to say a, little, a special quick thanks to a real good friend, Chris Walkie, who's kept my game in enough shape that I can at least try and compete with my boys these days. Chris has been a special friend and uh, enabled me to go out and enjoy golf uh, as best I can, which is, is not like it used to be, but it's still fun. And I try and give my boys a hard time. And I do want to say a special thanks to a lot of my friends that are here this evening. I've uh, got a wonderful group of friends that have been a part of my life for 30 plus years that have all met through me and through golf and they travel with me to tournaments they've been to a, almost as many masters as I have maybe more since I've quit going and they'd meet up at other tournaments just to be there for me and to enjoy golf and these guys are the kind of friends that they're not worried about you when things are going well I get calls from these guys when things aren't going well they want to make sure I'm okay and that's, that's what a friend is. And I'm lucky and blessed that I have as many as I do. And guys, you know who you are, and thanks so much for being here. You're so special to me. You know, part of being a success in life is, is looking at your family. And I'm blessed that I've had a terrific sister that's really cared about me and wonderful, wonderful children. My sister Ann was always a support for Bobby and I and helped every place she could uh, when we were growing up and I do appreciate everything she's done. And then my daughter Jessica and Jim hit on one of my favorite things and it's one of my favorite pictures in the world is, my, is her on her 12th birthday when I won the Disney tournament, right there. I was the biggest character on stage that day, Jim, by the way. So, but it was, uh, it was great being there and having her as a daughter and I've, you know, she and her husband, Chuck Grieg, and my grandson, Charlie, is here. Uh, and I am so proud of him and he's just a beginning golfer and I know we're gonna have a lot of great days together. And then, thank you. And my boys, Travis and Tucker, they have taken up the love of the game as much as Bobby and I have. And I gotta tell you, it's, it's nothing has warmed my heart more. Travis is a senior at our alma mater, Arnold, at Wake Forest, playing on the golf team, doing very well. Tucker is a 17-year-old rising junior in Dallas, and they can both play. And you've probably heard the story. When I was inducted in the Hall of Fame, I made the comment that my youngest son, Tucker, has said, Dad, you know you're now the fourth best Watkins. You know, <clears throat> there's Uncle Bobby, there's Travis, there's me, then you. <laughs> well, with all the hard times I've given these boys over the year, I guess when I get with them, I get it back in spades, and it, it, it sure comes. But they're, they're great, and they keep me young, and they keep me wanting to play 
golf and play well so I can, I can just take a little bit of money out of their pocket, which I did the other day. <laughs> the old men, Chuck and I beat them, so it was good, good stuff. I wouldn't be here tonight without my brother Bobby. You know, um, from day one, we've played more rounds of golf than most people ever experienced in a lifetime. I mean, we didn't always get along. We fall on the course, and, and I usually won the fights until he got bigger than me. <laughs> then when he quit fighting, I was at least smarter there. But he pushed me at every turn. Uh, he's a wonderful player in his own right. We've always been each other's biggest fans. And I know that I would not be here without him. Thanks, Bobby. And my partner for the last 30 plus years, my wife Penny, I can only say thanks for putting up with me being gone so much. And, you know, all I've got to do is look at what a great mother you've been, what a great grandmother you've been, hard to believe you're a grandmother, to these boys. And I mean, you know, your Hall of Fame. And uh, it's been a wonderful journey. We'll celebrate number 31 in about nine days. So, 31 years. I love you and thank you so much. You know, I'm not the only one that has a love of, of history and tradition in the game, and, and I've spent a lot of time with um, a good friend of mine, a Hall of Fame member, Ben Crenshaw, and um, over the years, Ben and I, well, if we hit a certain city and we had a, a hero there, we'd go see him. We'd go see Ben Hogan at Fort Worth. We'd ride, either see him at the Champions Dinner or we'd see him. We, I, I love, we'd love to go watch him hit balls at Shady Oaks. And, and uh, when we go to Shady Oaks, Hogan would see us coming. And as soon as he'd see Ben, he'd start shaking his head. Ben, how could you have won Colonial? He said, you can't hit it straight. Now, Lanny, he should have won Colonial a bunch of times. He hits it really straight. But you, you won Colonial. And he would just shake his head, and you won it twice. And it used to just drive Hogan crazy because Crenshaw hit it so crooked. But he loved Ben, and he, and he had a great sense of humor when he was around people he, he enjoyed. And I, you know, one of the things about being around your heroes is seeing their real personality come out. And I was fortunate enough to be around Hogan enough to see that personality and enjoy his company. Uh, one year we were in Houston, and Ben and I decided to go see Jackie Burke over at Champions. We made the drive over and we walk in the pro shop at Champions and before we, we even say a word, Jackie sees us coming. And he says, boys, see this putter? And he holds up a mallet head putter he'd just taken out of the rack. And he said, before I'm done, now you gotta understand Jackie's in his 60s at this point in time. He says, before I'm done, they're gonna have this putter in a glass case with candles lit at both ends. I'm gonna win so much with it. Well, that's the optimism of a golfer always wanting to win, always going to get better. And I can only think of Jackie Burke and say that that's how I feel tonight. And I'm telling my boys that I've got a putter in my bag. They may not, they may not put it in the glass case and, and light candles at both ends, but by the time I'm done, I'm going to climb the Watkins ladder, boys, so watch out. I'm coming. Thank you so much for letting me be a part of your evening.